Alright. <clears throat> this is what I'm messing with right now. I'm trying to get this Pixhawk, this mini Pixhawk installed into a 350 Pro and it's coming along. Um, this bundle right here is all the motor ESC outputs from it. This is going to get made into a more permanent harness. Um, I'm just testing right now, uh, so it's pretty uh, pretty rat nested, but this is how far I've gotten so far here. And once the unit's powered up, we'll have a board with a buzzer and a status LED on it, and it also has a button. Um, all Pixhawks come with a uh, button that you have to press that pretty much goes through um, all the you know self checks like compass and GPS and all that good stuff. Um, so if everything isn't right and you press this button, it's gonna it's gonna tell you something. Um, it's gonna beep at you. Um, the ESCs are beeping right now because they don't have a signal coming from the Pixhawk yet until it passes. So what happens is when you press this button and everything's passed, the ESCs will fire up when you press and hold this button. But right now, we have a red LED, which means something isn't passing. So it doesn't matter how much you press this button, it's not going to arm. Um, I just had it armed, but I couldn't get the motors to spin because I haven't actually gone through all the wizard and, and done all the calibrations and all that yet. So... Um, it's definitely not going to pass its self-check test right now. Um, but this is where I'm at with it so far. Um, it's coming along. The only problem I'm running into right now that's really not easy to deal with is the fact that the compass, the USB, and the main status LED for GPS and compass, you know, calibrations is all on one micro board right here. So... I have to break out the USB and convert it over to the Walkera plug, and that's not hard to do. I also have to break out the LED. The compass I'm going to try to disable. Um, the LED can also be run from another I2C port, which I'm going to use this, which is an I2C bus splitter. Um, but you can't just connect LEDs directly to this. You have to have a type of smart LED with a Toshiba chip on it that allows the LED to talk correctly with the flight controller. Um, and then the compass will also plug into this breakout board. Um, I'm hoping that is going to be my answer to getting LEDs broke out to the stock LEDs in the, in the unit. So I have a little board coming that has just the chip and the LED on it. It doesn't have compass or USB or any of that on it. Um, I can take the LED off of that board and that gives me all my soldering points to, to break out from the board and solder these stock LEDs directly to the outputs on it. That's what I'm going to do to fix that problem. The compass is going to be the next issue i got to deal with. Um, but the way this is looking is it's going to be running two compasses at the same time. And that's the way it's supposed to be, the way it's looking. Um, so I think that's where it's going to go uh, there's going to be two compasses, one on the leg and one inside the unit. I'm going to try to disable the one inside the unit, um, but I'm not sure if it's going to let me do that. If I disable it and it doesn't have that secondary backup compass, it may not work. Um, but I don't know if that's 100% true. It's probably not. I can probably get around not using that one. So that's where we're at with this. Of course, installing a mini Pixhawk into one of these is the first time this is being done. Um, it's a pretty much revolutionized flight controller for something like this. It's completely different from APM or, or something like that in the way it does its stuff. So stay tuned for more information. I'm working on it. Have a wonderful afternoon.